Welcome into the channel everyone. If you're one of those people who have called up the metal supply store because you've got a project that you're working on but it's your first time doing it and you don't know really what the lingo is, what to order, what you need, or if you're getting a good deal on it, then this video right here is for you. Now this is usually going to start off as one of two ways. You're going to either get a phone call or maybe you just get a good idea and you've got this project that you want to start. So maybe you start by taking some measurements and getting a rough sketch together so that you know exactly what you're trying to build. This is also going to be what your customer wants you to build. It might be out of what material. We don't know yet. We're still in the planning phases of this thing. Once you've got a general idea, then you really can start doing a little bit of math here and there so that you can start putting together your bill of materials. Your bill of materials is going to be the stuff that you're going to need to ask the metal supply store what to buy. Now when you go about getting a quote from these metal suppliers, do call around. Do not. Do not go to your big box store and buy yourself some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. It is marked way up. I don't care how little you need, there's a better place to get that stuff. When you go to calling places, sometimes it gets kind of confusing because you got this list of stuff that you want to get, but you don't know what it's called maybe, or maybe you don't know what sizes you need and dimensions. Everyone gets the same list that I have as far as my bill of materials. I get all the quotes back. If I find one with the best price, I also consider the convenience of things. And if I'm not paying any extra for that convenience. And we'll talk about those as we meander on down to the Metal General, which is my favorite weld supply here on the north side of Houston. And we'll talk about all of those things. Welcome to the Metal General. If you've been watching the channel, at least when I've had a hold of it, you've seen that I've come here a lot. Now it comes down to what does that metal supply also offer you and what do they carry? Some suppliers will carry every range and variety of steel. Some of them will carry different alloys like aluminum and stainless. And some of them only cater to the small stuff and some of them only cater to the big stuff. Not only that, but some shops like Metal General have things like a brake, benders, rollers, and they'll usually cut things to size no matter the minimum. That's a huge thing for me. Cutting links, uh, parts to length is super nice, super convenient. Usually if you have convenience, you also have a little bit of money added on to that. You usually are charged per the shear cut or per the cuts that you are getting. So you wanna make sure that those are down to a minimum and they're definitely worth your time. All those different shapes and sizes could get uh, a little bit difficult to understand. We'll go inside and see what we can find. Now when it comes to sheet steel, it comes in a range of thicknesses. It does usually have a general size, the big sheets being four foot by eight foot. Again, depending on the metal supplier you use can cut those down to whatever size you need any awkward shape with the shear these guys will do it here at metal general you're going to need to know what gauge metal you need starting at maybe around seven all the way up to 28 now i know that sounds confusing 28 is actually the thinner side of things whereas seven is going to be super thick closer to three sixteenths of an inch plate i usually use a lot of 16 gauge stuff if i need something stout eighth inch material which is about 11 gauge for something pretty pretty sturdy after that i usually go up and in, into like plate 3 16 inch plate the quarter inch stuff but if i really want to manipulate some sheet metal now we get into the 20 gauges those are a lot easier to hammer around and shape than it is say 16 gauge it's pretty tough now when it comes to super heavy duty plate steel metal general doesn't usually carry the really big four by eight pieces if not bigger because you can get them bigger don't get it twisted they make these things massive as far as plate sheets go i used to work in pressure vessels and they'd make sheets customized to make huge tanks quarter inch is about the max that metal general carries but you can order other things and of course in their flat bar they have some half inch and some thicker stuff but plate steel is, is what it is it's it's sheet metal just super thick i use a lot of plate steel for metal demos i'll come in here a lot for little pieces of quarter inch or if they have some nice flat bar for some demo plate i use some of that Most most of the things that I do in my home shop, 3 16 of an inch, quarter inch plate is usually maxing things out for what I need. Now let's talk about this metal rack behind me. We've got a bunch of different shapes and styles of metal on here, so let me go through them all. First, we're gonna start with square and rectangle tubing. Tubing can be manufactured with a seam on it or seamless. Usually they'll come in up to lengths of about 20 feet or 24 feet. You gotta know these things whenever you're getting your bill of materials together. But you wanna also know the links that you need on either side of the square tubing. Being that it's square, both the sides are even, so you just wanna know if it's two inch by two inch, and then the final measurement that you need is the thickness, the wall thickness, which could be in gauges, or if you typically ask the metal supplier, you know, hey, I need something about an eighth of an inch thick, they usually can gauge about what that is. In rectangle tubing, your sides are gonna be different. So you're gonna need to let these people know what that is. Now, when it comes to rectangle and square tubing, I use it a lot when it comes to framing out stuff. The size and thickness of tubing obviously is gonna rely on the amount of strength and structure you're gonna need to build whatever project that you're building. 
two by two eighth inch tubing is pretty stout stuff and it can get a lot stouter than that. Keep that in mind whenever you're doing these square tubing and rectangle tubing. The other thing that we're gonna get into is angle iron and flat bar. Now, if you look up a full stick of square tubing versus a full stick of angle iron, you're gonna notice a little difference in price. But you can imagine so, it's not as much material. That being said, angle iron having two sides instead of four is not gonna be as stout or sturdy in a couple directions. It's still a strong piece of material, but the things that you need to know are the two different leg lengths. You're gonna have either the same sides, just like the square tubing, or you're gonna have two different sides, and you're gonna need to let the metal supplier know what you're looking for, if those sides of those legs on that angle iron are even, or if one is shorter than the other. The final thing that you're gonna need to know is the thickness for that angle iron, whether you need stuff that's really thin, like say that 11 gauge, or maybe you want something really thick, like quarter inch, and even thicker. Angle iron comes in really small sizes, up to really big sizes. And they still call it angle iron, but they're just gonna maybe name it a little bit different as far as the thickness. And again, these will come into 20 foot sticks. I don't believe they make them in 24 feet, but you need to know that if you think you're just gonna get your part cut in half and you think you're getting 12 feet instead of the 24 that square tubing can cut in. These are all the things you need to know. As far as flat bar goes, the only dimensions we're gonna need are the one length and the thickness. Depending on where it's at and how you configure it is where the strength is. Know that it's also gonna be sold in 20 foot sections. Next thing that we might would talk about is your solid bar stock. Typically, you're gonna see this in either a round or square. If you start getting rectangle, I think we're getting more into that flat bar talk, so we might consider it something else. But sometimes you can find it in hexagon shapes. They got different shapes and sizes for stock. Here at Metal General, we're seeing a lot of this square stock and a lot of this round stock in various thicknesses. So when you go to ask the metal supply what you need as far as solid, round, or bar stock, make sure you know the thickness and the overall length that you need. And that's really it when it comes to square bar stock. Now I think up until this point, everything is pretty straightforward. You measure a side, you measure a thickness, you ask for the shape, it's pretty much straightforward. Now things start to get a little bit difficult depending on what you ask when it comes to the round stuff. First thing we're gonna talk about is round tubing and pipe. I don't really know where the line is that changes from tubing to pipe. What it really boils down to is pressure rating, tolerances, and what's flowing through it, structural stuff, all these things to consider whether or not you're trying to get tubing or pipe. The biggest things that you need to know are the diameter of it. That's gonna be something that you ask for. When it comes to tubing, outside diameter is the only thing that you need to know. That and the wall thickness in a decimal form. It's a lot like sheet metal when it comes to gauges and it's measured in those decimal forms. Pipe, on the other hand, goes by a nominal schedule number. And what that means is it's pressure rating. The standard is about schedule 40. These numbers can range from schedule five, 10, 15, 20 to 40, up to 180. They get really, really big. And when those numbers get bigger, the pipe gets thicker. You're not getting that actual tolerance as far as the decimal that you might be looking for. You've got to know four inch schedule 40, your inside diameter will be four inches, but not your outside, unlike tubing. When you start to get bigger in pipe sizes, say up to 12 inches, your still schedule 40 is still gonna be that 12 inches until you get to 14 inches, and now everything's measured on pipe outside to outside. And I know that gets really tricky because if the schedule number goes up, that wall thickness gets bigger, and now the inside diameter changes even further. So a four inch schedule 120, it doesn't have the four inch inside, but the outside still stays the same, but it's not four inches. Super confusing, and I'm sorry about that. If you're scratching your head, I'm sorry. Now the last challenging thing that I'm gonna try to explain to you guys is C-channel and I-beam. C-channel is a little bit different than I-beam in the sense that if you think about it, an I-beam is almost like two backwards facing C-channels, but the dimensions that you ask for aren't always the same. Usually if you're calling and asking for a C-channel, you're gonna ask for the width, so the distance from edge to edge on the back side, and then the depth of the, the web, which is going to be the long piece or the center piece. That's gonna change a little bit more when it comes to I-beam. It kind of translates a little bit back more to the pipe schedule you're going to need to know the depth from the edge of the flange to the web you're going to need to know that dimension and then the whole length from top to bottom of what you're asking for if you have at least those two dimensions typically the metal supplier can translate and find what beam that you're looking for because as things get up uh, there and the pounds per foot that it needs to hold 
those wall thicknesses are going to change and they're not exact as far as the dimension that you and I can maybe remember. Depending on the grade of beam, things change as well. So that's why I-beams are a little bit different and a little bit more difficult. If you have a better explanation, leave it down below. I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate that. One last thing that I like to do before I leave my metal supply is look at any of their drops. Scrap steel, aluminum, some of it's stainless. You never know what you might need or just find laying around. Another man's trash is another man's trevor, treasure at the metal supply store. Lots of drops, lots of different shapes and sizes, and I think it's one of the best places to find some metal to practice on because it's either really cheap or affordable because they're trying to get rid of it, or if you build up a good relationship with your local metal supply, it could be free. That's all I got for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope you found some value out of it. We'll see you all in the next weld.